Alright, hello people of the internet. Today we are going to take this watch, texture it in Substance Painter, and then bring in the Sketchfab, and everything will be dandy. Um, as a little bonus, um, I have like a little animation thing going on here, so I'll, I'll just show a little quick animation setup, just so that, you know, a little bonus feature. Anyway, so I've already baked my normals just because I don't want to put people through that process. And you want to assign materials to it because if you're working on um, like a, 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 an object that has multiple uh, texture maps or texture sets, uh, for instance, like I wanted to have one image that just covered the face of the watch and then one image that just covered the bands or something, uh, I could do that. Uh, in this case, it is all one material for the watch, but I also have it sitting on this uh, pseudo table, which is really just a plane, but I'm going to put texture on it, or I have, yeah, there's going to be a wood texture on it. And um, so what I have here is I have a material uh, that is assigned to the table, which is called matte wood, and then on the watch, it's called matte watch. But these names, sorry, these names won't come up in Substance Painter, unfortunately. You actually have to rename the shading group above it. So I called this one shading group wood, and then this one is a shading group watch. Uh, then what you have to do is you select, uh, or not select yet. Uh, you want to take your watch or your objects and just break it up into parts. Um, so what I have here is an exploded version of the watch um, where I've just offset everything. Just uh, I did this simply so that uh, it's easy to texture if I want to like paint in specific things. Um, I'd also offset the board because if I'm baking, I'm going to bake ambient occlusion in in Substance Painter. I had baked it next normal, but my uh, uh, there were some issues in the areas around here, and it just didn't look as nice. I feel like if I just have my normal map and bring it into Substance Painter, I can create some decent AO. So that's the route I'm going to take. Uh, anyway, so I select this stuff, and I go select all, um, then you go file, export selection, and you export OBJ. I've already exported it, so I'm not going to show you, but make sure uh, you have materials checked on, because uh, you, you need to tell Substance Painter what the different materials are for like the uh, watch and the table in this case. So, yeah, make sure, make sure those are on. Anyway, so you export that, and then you go into Substance Painter, and you go File, New, Import, uh, sorry, you gotta select your object, which in this case is here. Loaded Watch. Um, and set this, this is uh, your, your resolution of your textures. This can be changed at any time uh, because everything in here is procedural, which is great. Um, but I'm just going to set it at 2048. Just, just anyway. So here we go. Uh, here's my watch. Here's like the exploded thing and all the parts. And uh, the first thing you want to do is actually assign your normal map to the watch. Or sorry, import all your uh, baked uh, textures or everything that. Sorry, that's uh, you got to import everything that uh, was done outside. So what I have is I have a basic color. Um, a normal map and an ID map, right? So I'm just going to ID map because I was in a image, ID map in here, this one. Now this was baked in X normal. Uh, I want to quickly, I want to quickly show how, th how that was done. So within X normal, if I just pop that up real quick. Uh, in the baking options, there's base bake base texture. Uh, try to say that three times fast. Uh, anyway, so here uh, you just set uh, right object ID if no texture add on. So then in your high poly, if all the separate meshes meshes um, will have a color assigned to them. And that's that's pretty much it. So now with the watch, uh, oh, also note that I have the two materials that I've set up in Maya. But uh, we're focusing on the watch right now. So uh, in here, I'll just select my normal map. And then I go and I bake my textures. I'm not actually going to do this because I have another file. I'm going to do the whole uh, 
you know, easy bake oven kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to show the finished product um, and then break it down just so that you don't have to watch my process. I actually recorded it originally, but my recording didn't save. Kind of mad. But uh, that's okay. Anyway, um, I digress. Uh, so you'd go in there and you bake your base textures. Make sure you set this resolution to something a little higher than 512 or else you're going to get some really low resolution maps, which is no fun. Uh, and make sure your normal's unchecked because we already have a normal. And you'd uncheck anything else that you already have. I mean, you could have your AO and cavity and stuff in other maps or in other things outside. But yeah, that's it. So now we're just going to step out of here and go into my other file. Do that. Watch. Done. Ha ah, hmm, That was fast. Um, okay, so what do we have here? So what I have here first off is uh, several folders um, or groups. So I have one for leather, one for metal, one for stitches, and one for plastic. Um, so the reason I do this is just so that it's easier to track what I'm working on. Um, yeah, like if I some in some cases you'd have a separate map for the leather parts or a separate map for the metal parts. So like what I have here, except you'd have, instead of watch, you'd have like watch metal, watch leather. And if I did that, then I wouldn't bother having different folders because it's already a group on its own. Um, you also note that I put the AO on top because I just, I like, I, I feel like it adds a little bit of uh, pop to your textures. I'm going to turn that off just so that when I'm breaking things down, it's easy. It's going to hide everything except for starting with. Also note, um, I already have this done. I did this in Photoshop. Uh, the reason I did that in Photoshop is just it's way easier to do something like that in Photoshop than it would be to do in Substance Painter. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of that because this is a Substance Painter tutorial, not a not a Photoshop tutorial. <laughs> but it, essentially, I just made this image. Um, I also replaced the logo with. It. So uh, breaking this down. Uh, so the first thing I did was uh, I looked at my reference. Um, but I took some, you know, creative liberty with it because I didn't want to do exactly the same thing. But this is the watch that I was referencing, um, and that's essentially that. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to take what I have. You know, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. So I went in there, and I found a nice leather. I believe I picked the standard leather. Um, but keep in mind, even though you pick something in here, don't just put that because it's just going to be stupid <laughs> well i shouldn't say that but it's gonna be uh it's just gonna look like a substance painter textured model and no one's gonna care um just because it it looks really really bland so but anyway i started with that yeah it is a standard leather it's okay there i tried another one before too it just didn't look right um and then i played with the settings um because by default um my model is really small in in the scene so I wanted to adjust like UV scale and things like that. Uh, on, I believe I adjusted it somewhere on the, probably like on the pattern or something. But anyway, I adjusted all that stuff. Um, so you just adjust the UV scale so you can do. Yeah, there we go. See how it's changing the size of the little crackles and stuff. I hope it cracks and yeah. I hope that the resolution's high enough to see that. But there's like a little bit of a texture thing going on. And I also changed the base color to be. Uh, something that's more in line with what I wanted. Um, however, it didn't, because of all the stuff that was layered on it, it, it wasn't quite getting what I wanted in terms of color. So I actually added a color offset to make it a little bit more orangey. Um, you'll also note now that this has like a dark border on it. So I wanted to have something like that. So to do that, I just added um, uh, a fill layer. So you just go click here and you go add fill layer. Um, so this is where, like, this is how you could add like custom textures, colors, whatever, um, and then you just check off what you want and don't want. In this case, I, I'm not changing the height or the roughness or the metal or whatever. I'm just changing the color. So I just picked. Um, I'm just gonna pick it from here. But I picked that brown um, color. I actually color picked it right off the image and adjusted a little bit because for some reason it was coming out pale here. And uh, and then I just applied a mask to it. So I did a bit ma no, um a generator mask. I think, uh, no, that's not gonna work. You have to actually add a black mask first, and then you go add generator. I was kind of hoping that you could just add generator, but a thing apparently. Um, and then you select edge wear. I can never tell which one it is. I I always go down to the left over here and generator. Oh, and you just do uh, 
edge selection. generator um and i didn't want concave because i just wanted like the outside edge not these little edge things in there so i just off um i increased the level because it wasn't getting as far out as i wanted to not too much you'll notice it's getting like some funky jarring crud here um watch my language um so i just like soften that out until it's gone um I increase the width here so that i can get the edge and then yeah there it's essentially the same thing I had. I mean, the settings are slightly different, but not, nothing. And uh, yeah, that was simple as that. Um, and then I just go in and I just do that kind of process for everything. I mean, uh, next step would be the metal. Um, so in the metal, I just kind of mask that off. I think the biggest thing to note about the metal is I use brush metal, right? So you get these like lines that go along. This is very important when it comes to UVs. Um, so I. My UVs are flat and straight out. Um, I didn't do something I should have, which is have them all the same direction um, of what I wanted the streaks to be. So I actually have two layers of metal here. I have aluminum brush one and two here, um, just for the two different directions. And what I did was I just masked off the ones that I had going one direction, masked off the ones that were going the other direction. Pretty simple. And uh, yeah, that's it. Everything else is not too fancy. I mean, uh, Oh, I did also add some wear to the metal just to kind of make it a little bit fancier. Um, and that's again just with the fill layer. Uh, so if you go into my damage layer here, it's just a fill layer. Um, so I've just, I added a little bit of color so there's like, it, it it's noticeable in the, in the color map. I mean, realistically, I, I, I don't think it would actually be a different color, but uh, anyway, that's what I did. Um, and then I adjusted the metalness and roughness just so that there's a bit of a specular difference. I'm not even sure if it makes that much of a difference, but yeah, yeah, you can you can see it, right? See. Anyway, um, so it's just like a little subtlety, just to make it, you know, not the standard again. Like what I was saying, don't just drag something on and say it's done. Um, and then I also I masked off the face because it's under glass, so I wouldn't expect it to have a lot of wear. I left a little bit on just so it looks, you know, not just super clean. Um. Yeah, and then the stitches I just use like a, a, a cloth material. I mean, they're just they're small, so I don't really care that much. No one can see it or look at it that closely. In fact, I'd probably reduce the uh, resolution and be all blurry. Um, one thing I just noticed now is I would actually fill this in with like a black or something, uh, like the holes, so that it doesn't look a mess. <laughs> um, so let's do that now. Uh, go here. Actually, I don't even need anything. I'm just gonna add a fill layer. Um, I'm just going to set that to black and we're just going to take the super rough, not metallic, and we don't care about height at all. Turn that off and then we're going to just add a black mask and then add a, uh, then we're just going to go in here and, oh yeah, uh, this is a good time to talk about ID maps. So I have a, ID map that I baked, which I talked about earlier, and you'll notice that it actually has the holes in a different color, I think. Oh, no, not that. Uh, well, I guess it didn't really do what I wanted to uh, in that case, but you'll, the, the, this is what I did for the stitching, right? So I added um, color selector and I just like said, only on the stitches, or it picked the leather <laughs> there only on the stitches lick there no uh, anyway sorry <laughs> uh, click there yeah now it works okay so you know make sure you're zoomed in don't be stupid like me um but i'm actually not gonna do this because i'm gonna have to manually paint this part what i'm just gonna do is i'm just gonna take my brush uh, just a regular standard brush. Go in here, make sure this is nice and small. Paint it in. There you go. And this doesn't matter too much, just simply because um, uh, you're, it's going to be hidden by Geo, so it's it's not it's not really. Big. Um, I probably should have had symmetry turned on if I was. A smart person but it's just you know 
fast. Again, it, you're not going to really see it, so I'm not too... There. Then we're just going to go back into 3D view. Oh. <laughs> it only did one side. Um, again, not the smartest of people, but I am still a person. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, perfect. There, done. Um, and then again, the, the wood table, I don't want to be about. It's just something for it to sit on. So I'm just going to save that out. Save it. Oh, and I'm also going to put my AO back on. Save it again. And uh, that should be good. So we go File, Export Textures now. Um, so we got two materials here. Uh, I don't like using the default because it's always a pain in the butt to find. So I'm just going to save it to something. My watch folder. Watch uh, substance. And make sure you're exporting document channel and normal map because without normal map, it won't export the normals because these are your channels that are default. I mean, I could have added normal map to it, but I never really edit the normal map. The height map, when you have plus normal, will be added onto your um, original normal map anyway. So it's not a big deal. Um, and then you pick your resolution that you want to export at. And you hit export. And that's it. There we go. And waiting. And waiting. Good? They say we're good. Okay. There we go. And. Yeah, so the next step will be, um, I'll just go through the uh, animation export from Maya, then we'll jump into Sketchfab and see how it looks. All right. All right, so here we are back in Maya. I've assigned the uh, materials already. I just paused it for a sec so you wouldn't have to watch me setting that up. Um, so what I have here is I have a watch, and it's already rigged. Uh, so what I have, it's super simple. It's just skeleton. Um, and then I just use that to pose the watch. The only animation that I care about really is this. I'm actually going to bake the deformations and everything else because um, I actually deformed it using a lattice uh, just so that it would be easier to wait and I didn't want to deal with that because it wasn't really necessary. Uh, so I'm actually just going to take all the geo and except for the hand here because that's actually going to animate the second hand. This one here, this one's going to animate. This one needs to be separate. Everything else can just be, uh, all the history can be deleted. Skeleton, we're just going to... History. There. Now it doesn't matter. Um, let me go into here. I'm going to go to frame one. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm just going to shrink this up just so that I can. Much. All right. So there we go. The reason this is so long is because I, uh, or the animation is so long is because I actually want it to go around for a full second or a full minute. So it's just, uh, and all I did was just animate the joint. I didn't do any crazy rig or anything like that. But if you did, you'd have to bake the animations. Actually, I'm still going to animate it because I have, uh, you go into the graph editor. I have it so that it it continues on and on using a cycle offset. And it just keeps extending. That way I didn't have to animate every single tick. <laughs> um, you also note that I have, um, I, just so that it kind of like looks cool. I just made it so that it pauses and then it goes tick, pauses, it goes tick, and etc. Anyway, so that's not the important part. The important part is I have this and I want to take the first frame. I don't, uh, I'm going to get rid of this. I don't care about delete. These guys, I don't need these joints because, well, 
they're not doing anything anymore. Delete those. All that matters is my uh, little second hand. Anyway, so that's my joint. Um, I didn't bother even naming them really because better. Uh, all right. So once you have that, I'm actually gonna bake this animation out because I'm I'm I don't think uh, the export will. You, like I don't know if this uh, continuous thing will work in the export. So what you want to do is you select your joint, go edit or modify. Sorry, edit keys bake simulator. I've done this so many times you'd think I'd remember. Uh, I didn't have to hit the option box, but you know it's it's good to see what's in here. Um, so I'm doing time slider so you see the whole thing. Um, make sure that you have your whole animation. Know, open so make sure this is your end frame start frame and um, uh, if you had layers you could, you could bake to a layer but I'm, I'm not I don't we don't want layers. Uh, so yeah that's that's essentially it that's the main thing you got to keep in mind is time slider or you could set a time if you didn't actually do this all keyable channels good and hit bake, bake. And through a ton of frames Probably way more than I would want, uh, but oh well. There, so we got our you know intense frames. I hope this doesn't lug in substance or in not substance in Sketchfab, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if it does. Then well, we, I just won't use the animation at the end of the day, but that's fine. So I now have my joints and I have my watch, and I'm gonna take both these guys. Now the big thing that matters is that again you have your materials um, selected, so uh, or sorry, um, materials attached, right? Uh, actually, I, I'm, I I have glass here too, which I, I didn't I didn't do anything in Substance Painter because it's just going to be in the shader entirely. That's what matters. But it just gets like that little specular that kind of shines along the surface. Kind of nice. Um, so yeah, you just make sure you have all your materials and you export it properly. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to select everything, joint, the watch, and the plane. You go file, export, selection, or you could also use like the game exporter do thing, that's kind of cool, but I don't think I'll need it for this, maybe I will. Uh, you know what, yes, I will use the game exporter because then I can name my animation. And that's going to be a good learning tool too. So you go to animation clips, add a clip, uh, so it's the whole thing, and this is ticking. Um, and you want to choose your path. I'm going to create a folder called uh, Sketchfab. I always do that. Keep all the Sketchfab stuff together. And choose. You want, uh, I like, I, I'm not exporting multiple files, so I want everything in one file. Save clips to single file. Enter file name. Uh, watch. Uh, this I don't think matters too much. I do not want to embed BNDF, and that should be it. And I don't want to export all just the selection, otherwise I'm going to get all this other stuff that I don't need. Um, actually, I'm I'm just going to delete all that stuff. I don't need it. <laughs> there, cool. So it's, I got a nice clean file now. Export that like so. Successful, hopefully, and uh, watch Sketchfab. I watch, and I want to make sure I have all the materials with it. Now for my substance folder, um, get all these guys. Copy Sketchfab folder, and then we're gonna this here. Uh, zip it up. There it is. Everything's in there. Watch. Cool. Um, and we're just going to jump into Sketchfab. Upload. I'm going to click on this. Drag it on there. Continue. And I'm going to pause the video while this happens. Then we're going to do the Sketchfabs. 
All right, here we are in Sketchfab. I just zoomed ahead and did, uh, did all the work, and I'm just going to go through it. The first thing I want to talk about is the glass, because uh, I think it was the, is what required the most uh, most work. So what I did for the glass, uh, first you have to make sure your base color is black. Um, you make it shiny, it's not metallic, and it's not rough, right? Uh, the it is, like, the sharper the... Uh, Reflections are. You don't want it like super sharp, but good that you can see it. Um, I have a normal map just because I had like a kind of rim, um, kind of makes it look like a little something. I don't know if I actually want it or not because uh, it might be better. I don't have it actually. Getting some facts, but um, yeah, I actually yeah, just give me that. Um, okay, so the next thing that you need to do is set the transparency to additive. Um, so that it'll only take the reflections, um, and that's all you'll see, in, as opposed to seeing actual color offset. Yeah, so that's that's essentially it. And that's how you get some, you know, relatively nice looking glass in Sketchfab. So the next thing you got to do is the watch. So um, all I did was just pump in all the exported stuff from from. Uh, Substance Painter, so you got your base color, your metalness, your roughness, your normal map. Um, I also exported an ambient occlusion. I forgot to talk about that when I was exporting from Catch, or sorry, from uh, Substance Painter, so I'll just quickly talk about that. When you go to Export, Textures, uh, say Additional Maps. So you, you do once with your uh, document channels in Normal, and then again with your Additional Maps um, to get your AO out of it, or anything else that you might want that uh, wasn't normally exported. Um, and that's it. So it's pretty straightforward. You know, you just plug all that stuff in, and you're done. And uh, same goes for the wood. I just plugged all that stuff in. Um, that's it. Uh, other than that, uh, the next thing that you'll want to do for sure is uh, play with the lighting. Uh, I've seen so many times I see models uploaded. There's just no shadows. It's just not. It looks like this. Look, that's super bland. I mean, it has like the uh, environment. Uh, that's another thing too is like you can go through and pick whatever environment you want, you know, the lighting tab. Um, but lights, look at that, add shadows, adds secondary reflections and all that wonderful stuff that just makes it look Um, so, you know, make sure you put those things in. They're there, use them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, um, I just went in there. Um, I mean, I, I rotated it a bit because I wanted the light to come in from this side, but it was coming in from this side before. Um, so, you know, just play around with it and whatever look you want to get. Um, yeah, that's 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 it. Uh, simple, straightforward. I mean, uh, when you have animations and stuff, you can also go into your animation tab and you can you know, double time it. Something, I don't know. Actually, that would have been a good idea. I should have made the tick really fast in Maya and then slowed it down so that it would be normal speed. Uh, that would have probably saved in uh, how many frames I was exporting, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, annotations, I'm not going to mess with that because that's not the topic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's it. Um, then once you've done all that, take your, you know, take your camera, position it how you want, and uh, just take a, make sure it's nice and centered. Snapshot, um, not quite. Yeah, I like that. Click. Done. And we save settings. And we'll exit this. The other thing you don't want to forget is uh, going into your properties. Never forget your properties. Um, so watch this. Watch. So it's made for a tutorial. Enjoy. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Uh, categories, it is, yeah, uh, I don't really know what it would fit under, products and technology, gaming, uh, yeah, that sounds good to me, okay, tags, you know, watch, substance, painter, tutorial, Maya, Photoshop, just 
give it a bunch of tags. More tag. Wait, not photo scan. Photoshop. There you go. Um, I'm not going to allow download. No age restriction. It is not private. And. I tutorial or a uh, tutorial. There we go. Good. And I I know there's like a or something. Okay. Yeah. See, there's issues. I these pop up all the time, but in fine. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So you just go publish. And good. Model is done. And that's it. Have a good one, my friends, and until next time, see you later.